On the 26th of October, 1942, Carrier Division 1 found itself in the Battle of the South Pacific, better known as the Battle of Santa Cruz. During this battle, the flagship Shokaku would find itself damaged for the third time during the war, with the first time having been at the Battle of Coral Sea, and the second time having been at the Second Battle of the Eastern Solomons. Next to the day that the ship was sunk in June of 1944, the damage sustained during the Battle of Santa Cruz was the most critical state the ship had been in. Over the course of the morning, several U.S. aircraft had spotted the Japanese fleet, and Vice Admiral Nagumo had ordered an attack wave of aircraft to be spotted on the decks of his ships, and the pilots to be on standby in the event of an emergency. At 4.58 a.m., Nagumo received a report that a Saratoga-class aircraft carrier with its supporting vessels had been spotted by a Shokaku search plane. Nagumo sends in a second scout plane to confirm the sighting, and he quickly orders the spotted strike wave of four fighters and 20 torpedo bombers to attack the aircraft carrier. By 5.10, the first wave had successfully cleared the flight deck, and Shokaku recovers a few CAP fighters, and then Nagumo orders the armed second wave awaiting in the hangars to rise up and be spotted on the deck. At 5.40, the Kido Batai is taken by surprise when two dive bombers drop from the sky and land a single 500-pound bomb on the afterdeck of the Ijan Zuiho. This damages its fantail and prevents the aircraft carrier from recovering any of its aircraft. It was effectively taken out of action. Nagumo, fearing a repeat of midway, immediately orders all available deck personnel on Shokaku and Zuikaku to assist hangar personnel in preparing the second wave so that they could be launched as quick as possible, and he also recognizes that since Zuiho's attack wave had already been launched, Shokaku and Zuikaku would now have to take on the load of another aircraft carrier's planes. By 6.10, Shokaku's personnel had prepared the second wave, and it begins launching. It consisted of five fighters and 20 dive bombers. This is a rare occasion where Shokaku and Zuikaku did not operate together, as Zuikaku's second wave was not ready for launching, but Nagumo decided it would be safer for the ships if they had launched individually, as it got the aircraft off the decks. By 6.40, Shokaku's Type 21 general search radar detected an inbound strike of enemy aircraft with a distance of 78 miles. The wave Shokaku's radar had detected consisted of 15 dive bombers, 8 fighters, and 6 torpedo planes launched from the USS Hornet. At 6.50, Nagumo orders his ships to turn north to open the distance between him and the attacking aircraft, with the exception of Zuikaku, since its second wave was ready for takeoff, and the ship had to turn southeast into the wind to perform this operation. With Zuikaku having split off in a different direction from the other carriers, it veers into a cloud cover and would not be spotted by the attacking aircraft. At 7.10, Nagumo receives a report that his first attack wave had located one of the U.S. aircraft carriers and was beginning their attack runs. At 7.27, the attack wave that had been located by Shokaku's radar nearly an hour prior had finally caught up to Shokaku and was attacking from astern. Ten dive bombers from the USS Hornet would make their run on the Shokaku, and they would score, at the time, what was believed to be four to six hits. All of the bombs were 500 pounds, and they clustered amidships aft of the central elevator. The central elevator itself immediately collapsed, and a massive fire started amongst the hangars and flight deck in the area of the bomb hits. The numbers 6 and 8, 12.7 centimeter, Type 89 high-angle anti-aircraft guns were both destroyed and their gunners immediately killed. Luckily for Shokaku, the damage caused by the bomb hits did not go below the lower hangar deck and all of the ship's machinery was intact. Shokaku would remain on course northward, running at 30 knots while the fires raged amidships. It was obvious by this point the ship was out of the battle. Thanks to the fact that Shokaku's damage control team was very experienced by this point in the war, and they had updated damage control equipment following the Battle of Midway, they were able to contain and extinguish the fires within five hours. At 9.40, Nagumo orders the damaged Shokaku and Zuiho to retire northwest, leaving Zuikaku behind to collect the first and second attack waves. At 13.07, with the fires extinguished and Shokaku well outside of the danger zone, 
Nagumo orders the ship to be slowed for him to transfer his flag to the destroyer Arashi, and then he would be taken from Arashi to Zuikaku. A couple of days later, on the 28th of October, at 1500, Shokaku and Zuiho, with their destroyer escorts, arrive at Truck Naval Base, where they would go through emergency repairs before returning to Japan. On this day, a series of photographs would be taken of Shokaku, showing the extent of the damage so that it could be properly examined, and the Japanese decided that only four bombs had struck the vessel based off of the damage. One bomb had struck the starboard side, while three had clustered on the port side. Nearly 25 meters of the flight deck had collapsed into the hangars below. On the 30th of October, Admiral Yamamoto visits Truck, and he boards Shokaku to personally inspect the damage, where he also pays tribute to the nearly 100 crew members that had been killed in the bombing. Over the course of the next month, emergency repairs would be performed, and then, by the 2nd of November... Shokaku, Zuiho, and the heavy cruiser Chikuma were all sent back to Japan for permanent repairs. The Shokaku would arrive at Yokosuka on the 6th of November, where it would be dry docked and undergo repairs until February, then it would be transferred to Kure, where it would undergo a series of trials. The ship was effectively out of service until late March of 1943. The attacks on Shokaku at Santa Cruz were a defining point in the evolution of the Japanese Navy. It was one of the earliest times where a Japanese aircraft carrier spotted targets using radar, and it also put on display how the updated damage control systems were in fact capable of containing large fires. Damage that could have proved fatal several months prior had been contained, and the ship was saved to fight again another day. With that having been said, there is nothing more to add on to this topic for today. So, if you have enjoyed this video, why not leave a like and a comment down below, and have a wonderful day.